Hey everyone, Scary Spikes here, and welcome back to more coverage of Elite Dangerous. Jeez, Today we're going so to be lying. continuing our beginner's tutorial and guide, and we're going to be focusing on flying our first ship in the game, the Sidewinder, and making a little bit of money so that we can upgrade our ship and eventually upgrade to a new ship. So we're going to be focusing on money, and what better way to make money than some bounty hunting? Now, a lot of people have very different opinions about this, and of course, there are many different things you can do in Elite deployed. Dangerous, such as trading, mining, and a variety of other things in order to make money, but bounty hunting seems to be by far and hands down the most profitable way to make money early game. You can stand to make about a few hundred thousand to a couple of million in your very first day or two of playing in your Sidewinder Nothing ship. Successful. So, we're Engine's gonna go over a couple of things here, and the first thing we're going to look over is the outfitting on the ship. So we've landed at our station here, we're gonna repair and refuel and as you can see, I do have a little bit of cash in hand. I do have a few other ships. I, I fly a Type 7 right now, doing some trade routes to make the majority of my money. And then I do also have a Vulture, uh, which is an air, air superiority fighter. Very, very well-rounded ship for dogfighting. So I have those two ships. Uh, whenever I get a little bit bored of bounty hunting, I do some trading and vice versa. So let's go ahead into our outfitting. It's important to note that I haven't put anything else except for a standard docking computer into the Sidewinder. So this Sidewinder is going to be as fresh and vanilla as you get when you begin the game and we're here at uh, Adams Orbital which is a great system for demonstrating the very purpose of what we're going to be doing today so let's have a look at our outfitting of the ship as you can see everything is very stocked now on your particular ship especially if it's your very first one you'll see loaned besides some of these things don't worry too much about that it basically they're just rubbing it in your face that you're a noob and that this isn't actually your ship uh, but uh, regardless of the fact you do have all of your stock components which will be the same or very similar to this and as you can see down here this is my first recommendation that I would make to you is when you're in the station and you have any other station that you can go to that has the outfitting option because I believe the one you start on is just a dock they might not uh, but if you have any other area where you can go to where there is a station like this I would very highly recommend going into your outfitting and oh, that's the wrong one and getting one of these. This is a standard docking computer and it's a little bit down the list. Now of course if you're watching this video you've probably already watched the training videos and done the training missions and you're probably quite familiar with how to use all the different thrusters on your ship to land properly at a station. But if you're like me and time is of the essence you want to be able to get in and get out very quickly the standard docking computer is often something that I never overlook putting into any of my ships and the reason why is because it saves me a lot of time. It saves me a lot of time and frustration especially on those stations that are very awkwardly shaped it's very hard to find the entrance even with the little guide there it takes way too much time your ship actually automatically takes care of docking for you all you need to do is request docking permission and then simply reduce your throttle to idle. Your ship will take care of the rest. So I will demonstrate that for you a little bit later. But just so you know, these are all the modifications I have done to the ship, or just a single modification for that matter. It is bone stock, haven't even put vinyls on it, and we have the stock weapons. Uh, before we go out, I do want to explain the basics of weapons here very, very quickly because some people have had questions about this. So there are a few different types of weapons. You have your fixed weapons, your gimbaled weapons, and your turreted weapons. And I'll explain very quickly about how each of those works. So your fixed weapons are on a fixed mount, which means that you require the maneuverability of your ship in order to aim those weapons properly. Now, you still have a guide where you can lead the target, especially if you have weapons such as a multi-cannon that's fixed, because that fires projectiles, and just like in any other uh, point of view where you're in a ship and you're trying to shoot a moving target while being in a moving target with project, project, uh, projectile weapons, you do need to lead the target a little bit, which means fire a little bit ahead of its trajectory so that the bullets actually hit. So you still get a guide with the fixed weapons of where to shoot, but it doesn't aim automatically for you. These weapons typically have a lot more damage, uh, but they do sacrifice with the fact that they have very, very poor aim, and they depend entirely on you and your piloting skills to aim and being able to hit your target. Now, in contrast, you've got uh, this icon over here, which means it is a gimbaled weapon. You can see it's not exactly a straight cross. Uh, it, it kind of has these two ovals meeting in a cross pattern and what that means is that you still have to somehow get behind the target or within view of the target but that in the large capacity your weapon will actually automatically aim at the target as long as it is within sight so 
that's going to give you a little bit less firepower at the expense of, of course, well, at, at the uh, positive of being able to aim at your enemy automatically and only worrying about maneuvering your ship and firing your weapon and having your, your weapon automatically aim as long as your target is in sight. So I typically use gimbaled mounts and gimbaled weapons and there are some disadvantages to that that you'll find out later on. If you have an enemy that's using chaff for instance which is an electronic countermeasure where you fire some kind of uh, electromagnetic confetti I like to call it into the air uh, which does throw off the gimbaled weapons quite a bit uh, for a short amount of time. But if you can live with that and this is pretty much going to be your best bet in terms of damage to targeting. Uh, and of course we're looking at the turreted weapons now which is on the lower end of the spectrum in terms of damage but on the higher end of the spectrum in terms of convenience. So you always have to sort of choose. The gimbaled weapons are sort of right in the middle. The fixed weapons tend to do more damage but are very hard to aim and the turreted weapons you don't even have to fire. So long as your target is in sight the tur turreted weapon will lock onto them and start firing immediately. Usually turreted weapons are a bad idea especially when you get into the game a little bit more because they don't do nearly enough damage and you don't have nearly as much control over them. So if you have a bunch of pulse lasers that are automatically firing on your target and your power plant isn't configured to handle that load, your ship will overheat very, very quickly. And the only control that you have over that is to basically not fly behind another ship so that those turrets don't aim. So a little bit of information about those weapons. There are only three types, the fixed, the gimbaled, and the turreted weapons. And then, of course, there are a variety of different kinds of weapon types, as you can see here and that you can get into a little bit later on your own but in the meantime we're going to find out how to make a little bit of money on our sidewinder because that's what we came here to do so before we even undock the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our left panel here and we're going to go over into the left hand side here at the very bottom and we're going to go into system map wait for that to load Okay, so here we are. This is our system map. This is the system that we are in. Beta 1 Tekani. Tekani? I don't even know how to pronounce that. But what we're going to do is look for planets like these with rings around them. So why are you doing that? Well, because these rings have different kinds of properties. In this case, if we click on this particular planet here and we come over to the info panel on the left hand side, the center tab here, you can see that the first bit of information about the ring here, the very first line it says belt type rocky. Okay, if we go over to this side here, this planet, we have a metal rich ring. Those are two of three possible rings that you're going to get on planets, the third one being icy. And the reason why we're very interested in metal rich and rocky is because typically there are something called resource extraction sites in them. And usually there's multiple resource extraction sites within these kinds of rings. The third type of ring is icy, and because you can't mine an icy ring, there are usually no resource extraction sites there. So why are we going here? We're not mining. This doesn't make any sense. Well, it actually does, because what we're doing is we're going to be protecting the miners, which happen to attract a lot of pirates. And pirates have bounties, and when we get bounties, we get money. So, in a way, it all kind of adds up, and we're going to be able to make some serious dough here, even though our ship is really not up to par and not able to handle itself in a firefight. Fortunately, there's also police that come out and patrol these areas to help to protect those miners. And as long as we let them engage our targets first and get the last few hits in, we're able to actually claim the bounty as if we took them on ourselves. So it's a very, very cool way to make money very easy in the game, very easily, and very early in the game as well, which is going to help you upgrade your ship and do whatever else that you want to do in the game. So, how do we get there? Well. There's a few different icons on the screen as you can see. This is the station that we're currently at and this little icon here is showing us that we have another ship there which is our Vulture and then we have our Sidewinder parked there as well. The blue icon indicates our current location whereas the orange icon indicates our current waypoint. The way that you're going to set your waypoint is click on a particular planetary body like this one here and we're going to click on select. And since this is already selected you don't really see the difference but if I were to go to this one and click this button now you see that our destination has changed over here. So. We are looking for either a rocky or a metal rich ring, which we have here. This is metal rich here, and we are done. So we've set our destination. We can go ahead and exit the galaxy map, or the system map rather, and we can go ahead and launch our ship. All right, so we're just out of the station right now and in a very slow speed in Super Cruise, and we're gonna be heading over to 
this resource extraction zone. Now, I have all this information here because I've actually discovered this before, but if you haven't, it's okay for you to just simply go to the targeted planet that you selected in the system map. And then as you get close, you can slow your speed down in Super Cruise and you'll be able to target any of the other resource extraction sites that you see. So for now, we're gonna select this resource extraction site and I already have it locked, but you would just basically just click on it and hit lock location. And we'll go back into flight and increase our speed. And as you can see, I've already have it selected there. So we're gonna head towards that and hopefully find ourselves some pirates to kill. It's very important not to go too quickly here, especially since when you hit the rocks, you'll eventually just be taken out of Super Cruise and it can take you quite a while to get into the actual resource extraction site. So we wanna make sure that we don't go too quickly, but we go quickly enough that we're not gonna take three days to get there. What I usually do at this point is I increase my throttle to full and I keep an eye on the time and the distance that it's going to take to get to where I'm going. Usually within about 10 seconds of arrival I do reduce my speed down to either all the way down to idle or down to as low as I can possibly go without leaving the little blue zone as you can see there. At this speed we are going almost the speed of light so we should be getting there fairly quickly. And as you can see, the amount of time is decreasing and is, is the distance as well. So we're gonna slow down because we are starting to speed up a little bit. We had our throttle at full and we'll bring it up just a little bit. So it's just at the bottom edge of that blue area there. That doesn't necessarily mean that your ship is going to stop in time. It just means that your ship is moving at the ideal speed that it can maneuver at its best. And with these particular rings, you want to try to approach them from top down as much as possible so you don't want to come from the side you want to come from top down and wow we're getting interdicted here so let's see if we can do anything about that probably not but we're gonna try anyway there we go almost no nope, I think we're gonna get interdicted unfortunately barely hanging on here Warning. Yeah, we get we got interdicted. So that is bound to happen, and it's basically a pirate taking you out of Super Cruise. So we're gonna go ahead and just continue. Hopefully, we don't take too much damage. And we don't have any kind of defensive countermeasures. So let's see who we're dealing with. Security, ASP scout. Okay, so we're not exactly going to be able to do very well against an ASP. So we're going to have to wait until we see the icon on the bottom right-hand corner of our screen. Our FSD cooldown is reduced, and then we're able to get out of here. For some reason, he's not actually attacking. Maybe he didn't realize that it didn't have any cargo. So, but that, that is bound to happen. That is called an interdiction, and it's basically when... Somebody one, takes you out of Super engage. Cruise for one reason or another, and uh, you have a mini game of trying to align to the escape vector, and he has a mini game of trying to keep his interdiction uh, systems on you so as to pull you out of Super Cruise. And if the blue bar on the left hand side that you saw there fills up, then you get away, and if the red bar fills up, then he is successful in the interdiction and you get taken out of Super Cruise. So that can be somewhat annoying, but fortunately, we didn't lose our ship. And that ASP very well could have taken us out. It is a much larger ship than what we have. So we're going to continue here in Super Cruise. And uh, within about one megameter here, we're going to be able to jump out. We're going at a pretty decent speed. Three, two, one, and... Here we go. So here are all the rocks. <laughs> And uh, the best thing to do when you get into one of these resource extraction sites is basically to move as close as possible, usually within 10 kilometers is, is a good spot to be in, uh, because then you're not too close to the rocks, especially if you're in a larger ship. The Sidewinder is not that big of a deal, but if you're in a larger ship, like I have a Vulture that I take into these rocks quite, quite often, and it is a very maneuverable ship, but it is much larger, so it becomes a lot more difficult to maneuver in between all the different rocks. Uh, but I found that the, uh, the pirates and the miners and the security forces do not spawn, or at least not very reliably, until you're within roughly 10 kilometer radius of the extraction site. So here we are. And at this point, we just have to kind of 
fly around and wait for guys to show up. Shouldn't be very, very long. And now we are seven kilometers out. So you notice how very slowly this, I guess this is a good time to, oh. So you see that little squiggly line is kind of going all over the place. That means that we've got somebody warping in. So uh, if you notice, we're actually moving uh, quite quickly, but we're not rotating very quickly. And if we reduce our speed to within the blue zone, we are much more reliable, albeit a little bit slower. So that's something to keep in mind when you're bounty hunting, especially when you're in a heavier ship and you need as much maneuverability as you can get. All right, so let's go into our left panel here, and we're going to go into contacts, and we see that there is a Type 9 Heavy. It's very, very unlikely that he's going to be a pirate, because the Type 9 is more of a transport ship, but we are going to select him anyway, and fly over, and basically just point at him while he's targeted. And as you can see, he's flying the Type 9. Uh, you can see his name, you can see that he's a master, and that he is clean, and he is in the Emperor's Will, which is sort of a sub-faction within the Empire. Uh, which is where we are. We are in Empire space. So he's not going to be a threat to us, but someone's probably going to be looking to kill him. So we're going to fly around and we're going to see if we can find any other ships. There's some, definitely some ships warping in right now, as you can see by those yellow lines that are sort of all over the place. If they're sort of in one place, like that orange line over there with the Type 9 Heavy, that means that he is here. And anything else that you see that's being very, very shaky on your minimap there, it means that they're either warping in or warping out. So it gives you a good indication of where they're going to be coming from. Like there's one guy coming over here. Scan and there's detected. a few more coming over here. Yeah, speaking of which, there are two. So let's go ahead and scan this one. Now, you don't necessarily have to scan in first person like this. This one, unfortunately, is in a wing. He is wanted. But he's flying a Cobra Mark III, which is a slightly larger ship. And the only way that you're going to find out whether somebody is wanted is by scanning them like this. But if you don't want to actually fly around scan detected. and scan manually, well, you'll have to scan manually. But if you, want, if you don't want to target manually, you can actually go into your contacts list and they'll all be here. And anything that you've scanned will come up with a wanted level. So, for instance, uh, we've scanned one of these guys here. And it should come up as, there we go. So that's our current target, and he's got 31,200. Or at least that was our target. What happened to him? Okay, so when you're in a Sidewinder, it's pretty much critical that you don't take on massive ships that are much bigger than you. Of course, in a resource extraction site such as this, which is the hazardous, which is the worst of all three. Oops, that guy just got destroyed. There are three different types of resource extraction sites, and there are low, there are high, and there are hazardous, and usually the most action that you see in the highest bounties are in the hazardous ones. So let's look around and see. Detected. So you don't want to be engaging with anybody, especially if they're in a wing like this guy is here, but we are going to follow him and we're going to see who he's getting in a fight with, and eventually we're going to be basically just doing the last few hits. So once his shields are down, once his hull is down to about... 10, maybe 20%, uh, we'll be doing uh, some very light hits. Actually, let's get our hard points out. And that way, when they get destroyed by security forces Scan or detected. other ships, we'll actually get the bounty as well, which is really nice. So it's minimal risk for us and maximum profitability, which is what we want. Let's go around and see if we can take, oh, okay, that's a python. And he Scan is wanted detected. as well. So let's find a smaller ship. These guys are all scanning me. There are so many of them here right now. It's absolutely crazy. And this is the thing, it's going to take you way too much time to actually fly around and target each one individually. So if we want to look for a smaller ship, the best thing to do is to look at all these different contexts that we have. The Keelback is a fairly small ship, Asp Explorer, Federal Gunship, and a Python. Don't want to deal with that. We have an Anaconda here as well. Uh, that is actually one of the largest ships in the game. So. Uh, let's go ahead and target the keelback, although I think the keelback is just a miner, but let's have a look. I think the keelback is just a miner. Yes, the keelback is not wanted. So, that leaves us in a bit of a predicament because we definitely don't want to be engaging with an anaconda. And we've got a cobra that's wanted, so maybe we'll focus on him. Now, the cobra is definitely not as versatile and maneuverable as the sidewinder, but it's definitely got a lot more shields and armor. And it's definitely got much better weapons, so you have to be very, very careful. We're going to follow this guy in an attempt to see... Actually, you know what? Let me see very quickly if this guy is taking any damage. 
He's not really taking any damage. So we're going to go back on the Cobra here. And uh, eventually when it gets pretty bad, uh, security forces start warping in. I don't see any here right now. Let's just have a quick look. Security forces will be in green. Right now it seems like there are none here. So you do have to take your time and buy your time a little bit. But basically what you want to do is, like I said, you want to wait for their shields to go down. And then you want to wait until their hull goes down to about 10 to 15%. Then you open fire on them, and even if all you do is hit them a few times and take off, you will get the bounty. Uh, so it looks like this guy's getting attacked quite a bit. We're going to follow him very closely, because we want to make sure that we land the finishing blow on him. Looks like he's trying to get away, but he's taking quite a lot of damage. Fortunately... Okay, the shields are offline, which is good. Fortunately, Cobras don't have very many hit points in terms of hull, so they sh he shouldn't last very, very long. And he's just falling to 90% right now, so we're going to continue to follow him. And unfortunately, these are the kind of tactics that you need to employ when you're in a smaller ship. All right. He is at about 75, so we're going to continue to follow him. He's taking quite a lot of hits. And he is in a wing, which is why I don't want to attack right now, because his wingmate will probably kill me. 50% hull, or 55%. He's taking quite a lot of damage. And there are a lot of other ships. All right, so we got 30%. Here we go. So we're going to attack right now. I'm going to put all of our points into weapons. Unfortunately, his shields just came back online, but now he's going to be dead. Beautiful. And that's all we need to do. And look at that, guys. 35,000 credits for barely anything. Letting other people do the work. Doesn't seem like we're being targeted by his wingmate or anything like that. So that's pretty good. And this is the way to make money. Unfortunately, in a Sidewinder, you're not going to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a lot of other ships. Look at this guy. He's getting destroyed here as well. He's wanted. His shields are offline. And 40%. We're going to start attacking him very quickly here. There we go. Just a few shots is all it takes. And look at that. Another 25,000. So for me, this isn't a lot of money. But when you're starting brand new and you're looking to make some cash and you only start with 1,000, making 50, 60 grand in the first few minutes alone is very, very profitable. So I would advise you to continue doing this. Be very careful as to which ship you actually attack. Make sure to manage your contacts very carefully. Uh, you'll be able to see the ship type on the very top. Cobras are slightly smaller ships. Anything that's like a Cobra, an Adder, a Hauler, or even a Viper, although I probably wouldn't engage a Viper, uh, are pretty good targets. And you do want to make sure that somebody else is engaging them first. Also, you have to be very careful if they are in a wing. A wing is basically a group of planes or spaceships, in this case, flying together. And if you attack one, then there's a very good chance that the rest of them will attack you as well. So you have to make sure that he's quite low, fire off a couple of shots, get on out of there, and claim your bounty. So that's pretty much going to wrap up the combat portion of this. So let me show you how to get back to the station and claim your bounty. So let's go ahead and put full hips into our engine here. We're going to get out of the mass lock area because, again, we are way too close. There we go. And let's go over to the nearest station. This is all by distance, so Adam's Orbital. So we can go ahead and lock destination. And then we just follow our compass and we engage our frameshift drive. Cannot comply. Oh, well, we can't do that actually right now because we need to bring our hard points in, so you have to disable your hard points before you can actually go into frameshift. Frameshift drive charging. Alright, and because this is within the system, this Four, is going to put us in three, super cruise, so it's going to be able to get us there one, quite quickly. Engage. Only about uh, 41 light seconds away, so that's not too far at all. So you can tell it's actually very, very easy to make money in this game at the very beginning with the rookie ship, but you do have to be very careful who you attack and when. Timing is a little bit more of a precise thing when you're in the early game because you want to make sure that you don't get destroyed. Uh, the key is to survive long enough to get back to the station and cash your vo uh, vouchers in because that's how basically how it works. It's kind of like dog tags um, or, or just tags in EVE Online if you've ever played that where you where you loot them and then you can basically sell them for a profit. Uh, bounties work in a very similar fashion here. Well, we better slow down. I think we're going to pass it. Bounties work in a very similar fashion in Elite Dangerous. When you kill somebody, you do get the bounty automatically, so you don't have to loot their ship. But it's basically in the form of a... Uh, I think we are going to pass it. 
Yes, we are. It is in the form of a bounty voucher which gets stored on your ship. So if your ship gets destroyed before you can get back to the station, you don't get any bounties whatsoever. Uh, so you do have to be very careful. You have to kind of bide your time most of the time, especially in the early game, and make sure that you only engage when someone else is being uh, engaged already and they're very, very low hull. And then basically just claim your bounty. That's all you gotta do. So a little bit of patience and a little bit of learning is all it takes and you can make a very large amount of money in a very short period of time by doing this once you start going into areas with larger ships. And as far as I know, these are all random spawns as well. They're not exactly going to be large ships in a certain area and small ships in another. Uh, what I found to work as well, uh, very well myself, is when I'm in an area where there are way too many big ships, uh, what I do is I log out of the game and log back in. And yes, that does kind of break immersion, but it also does reset the spawn. Uh, which means that I can go and go back within uh, 10 kilometers of the extraction site and it's very likely that I'll get a different uh, spawn of maybe smaller ships or medium sized ships. So what we're doing here is uh, basically this is a demonstration of the auto land system from the standard docking computer that we put into the ship earlier. What we do is we basically just approach the station. You can request docking permission within seven and a half kilometers and as long as you've done that you can throttle all the way back down to zero. And so long as you have a standard docking computer installed, your ship will land automatically. So we'll see you guys inside the station. Alright, so now that we are in the station, we're going to go into the Starport Services menu. Always make sure to refuel and repair whenever necessary, so you don't have anything to worry about when you go back out. And then we're going to go into Contacts. In your Contacts menu, you're going to be in the local security office by default you want to head over to the right hand side here and go to redeem all bounty vouchers so you can see we've got some bounties for the empire and emperor's will as well which has some interest in killing some of those enemies that we've killed and we've got a total of 60,707 credits go ahead and click on that and click confirm and there you go you've just redeemed some bounty vouchers from hunting down some pirates in a resource extraction site. So hopefully that's been very helpful to you guys. And if you liked it, make sure to leave a like. If it's your first time here, make sure to subscribe. And as always, guys, have a great day. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.